If you're working as a health, fitness, or wellness professional, you're either using intermittent fasting with your clients or you're going to run into clients that are either using intermittent fasting or they want to use intermittent fasting. So in this video, I'm going to explain five scenarios where clients should not be using intermittent fasting. Now, before we jump into this, I just want to say that I'm a fan of intermittent fasting. This isn't one of those videos of, oh, you using that new fangled fat diet intermittent fasting? Yeah, you're going to die. You'll be dead by Thursday. That's not this. I'm a fan of fasting. I use fasting myself. I use fasting with a lot of my clients. I even teach courses on how to use intermittent fasting. But just like I understand the benefits of intermittent fasting, I also understand that just like any diet, supplement, or food, intermittent fasting is not right for everybody. And intermittent fasting will actually do more harm than good for some individuals. So in this video, we're going to look at these five scenarios where clients should either not use intermittent fasting or they should correct these problems so that they can get the benefits from intermittent fasting. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now, a lot of health pros will see so many people seeing such great results from intermittent fasting or IF, as all the cool kids will call it, and they'll think, oh, well, this must be right for everybody. All my clients are going to do this because my other clients saw great results. But the reality is that each client is unique. We all have a unique bio-individuality. All of our bodies are operating differently. We're processing foods differently. And so each person is going to have a different reaction to each approach that is possible for a client to take. So we need to look at the unique bio-individuality of each client and understand if an approach is, is correct for them or if it's going to make things worse. So when we're looking at intermittent fasting, the goal for most people is weight loss and they're looking to lose the fat. They're not looking to just decrease this mass of their body, they're looking to get rid of the fat. And what we need to understand is that for a body to let go of stored fat, it needs to feel good about what's going on. If we're stressing the body out with what we're doing, the body's gonna hold on to stored fat like it's money in the bank. That stored fat is a backup fuel source that it can use in an emergency. So if the body is stressed out and feeling like it's in this emergency, it may not only hold on to this stored fat, it may store more fuel in the form of fat so that it can use it later for this emergency that it feels like it's dealing with. So I used to feel like the only people that should use intermittent fasting are those that are following a proper ketogenic diet. Because with a ketogenic diet, the body is very good at burning stored fat for fuel. And when you go without food, the body has this backup fuel source that it can use very efficiently. But I've since seen a lot of clients and a lot of people having a lot of success with intermittent fasting, even without a ketogenic diet, as long as they follow some of these principles that we're going to talk about in this video today. So the biggest concept to keep in mind when you're looking at intermittent fasting is that the body needs a backup fuel source when the fuel is no longer coming in. So when I'm talking about fasting, I'm talking about a, a client, you know, skipping breakfast, maybe they're skipping lunch too, and then they're having dinner. I'm not talking about this thing, oh, you eat whatever you want today and then just don't eat for six or seven days. I, I'm not a fan of that. I'm also not a fan of these fasting programs where you can just eat whatever you want and it doesn't matter what kind of crap you're putting in your body. As long as you don't eat for a few days, you'll make up for it. It'll be fine. I don't view this as beneficial. I view this as creating a lot of harm. So when I'm talking about fasting, I, I like clients to be eating real food. That's a really big part of it. And I like to use intermittent fasting in short distances. So basically, I'm just creating a longer amount of time, a longer window of time from when they're not eating while they're sleeping. So maybe they're skipping breakfast, maybe they're skipping breakfast and lunch on some days, or maybe they're not having dinner and they're starting that window of no eating a little bit earlier in the day. So the first situation where I don't want to see people use intermittent fasting is when they're eating too many high carb or high starch or sugar foods or processed junk, all that kind of stuff. Because here's what happens. When a client's eating these high carbohydrate foods, they're really spiking blood sugar level, which means they're also going to spike insulin levels. Now blood sugar will come down pretty quickly in an hour or two, but insulin can take a lot longer to come down. And as long as insulin is high, 
that blocks the body's ability to access stored fat and burn that for fuel. So now, when this person burns up their glucose, but their insulin is still really high, the body doesn't have a fuel source. It's gonna freak out, it's gonna be like, what do I do, I need to access fuel. So these stress hormones will start to raise that help the body function while there is no fuel source. It'll tell the body, hey, why don't you break down your own tissues and turn that into glucose and then we'll use that as fuel. So it's basically putting the body into a stress situation that restricts its ability to burn that stored fat for fuel. That's what we want to happen while we're fasting. Now here's the part that's even worse. When the body's elevating those stress hormones like estrogen, estrogen can thicken up our bile so that it doesn't flow correctly. Now, if you don't already understand the problems that can come when bile is not flowing correctly, check out our video on 10 reasons why proper bile flow is crucial. It can create a lot of trouble. You, not only can you not digest your food correctly, you can't process fats correctly, and you shut down the main detox pathway for the body. Bile flowing through the intestinal tract is how the body gets rid of all this filth and toxins that the liver filtered out of the body. So when bile isn't flowing correctly, all that filth and toxins get reassimilated into the system and the body's like, I can't deal with all this. I'm going to shove some of this into a fat cell. And then the fat cells expand and then your client's pants don't fit. So we really want to make sure bile is flowing. And when we're fasting in a way that's stressing the body out, that's going to thicken up the bile. It's not going to flow and we're going to create all of that trouble. The second scenario where I don't like to see clients using IF is when their mineral levels are too low. So basically, the body has these buffering systems. And when blood sugar goes too low, as long as there's enough minerals in the system, that can buffer those low sugars and allow the body to function the way that it wants to function. It feels good about it. And when minerals go too low, as long as there's enough blood sugar there, everything is okay. They can function and be a human being. But when someone has low mineral levels, and you can get an idea of this just by looking at their blood pressure. If their systolic blood pressure, that top number, is below 112, that's a strong indication that there's not enough minerals in the system. And there's a wide variety of reasons that someone may not have enough minerals in the system, but if they're low and then they start to fast, well, blood sugar is going to go pretty low and then minerals are already low and then here comes those stress hormones being elevated. The body's stressed in that scenario. The stress hormones are going to come up and we're going to get all of those same problems. And the person is not going to benefit from the fasting. So if someone has low blood pressure, I want to help them correct that issue to lift those mineral levels so they have a buffering system. And they can do okay when they're expanding that window of time when they're not bringing fuel in for the body. So if you don't understand how to look at these uh, minerals and how to look at someone's blood pressure and understand what's going on, my book Health Pro Results will walk you through how to look at simple self-tests that clients can run at home and give you that information and help you understand how their body is operating. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link below in the description so you can get the whole book totally for free. And that'll help you understand how to look at somebody's blood pressure and understand where minerals are probably at and do they need to correct that issue before they can really benefit from intermittent fasting. I also couple eating disorders into this category. Um, and I do that just because most eating disorders we see the client dealing with, it's often caused by these low mineral levels. And it's not allowing signals to travel from the body to the brain and the brain back to the body. And it can create a lot of trouble like that. But if a client is dealing with eating disorders, you don't want them fasting because that's going to trigger a lot of trouble for them. The third scenario where a client shouldn't be fasting is if they're dealing with any digestive symptoms at all. If they're dealing with anything like burping or bloating or constipation or diarrhea or acid reflux or, or nausea or even acne or skin issues or, or maybe their, their food just kind of sits there and feels like a rock for, for hours at a time. All of those things are very strong signs that some part of digestion is not working correctly. And when digestion is not working the way that it should, the client can't break that food down and pull all the nutrients out of that food. And when that's happening, the body's not getting the nutrients that it needs to function the way that it wants to. And it's looking for other resources. It's like, hey, I'm not getting what I need. I, I need some more stuff here. So then when the client stops bringing fuel in altogether, now the body's getting even fewer resources. And this is really going to stress the body out and raise those stress hormones. 
So if a client's dealing with any of these digestive symptoms, if you're new to this channel and you don't understand how to help clients work through these digestive functions, chapter three and four of that book that I told you how to get for free in the description below will help you understand how to help clients fix those digestive malfunctions and help them actually get the nutrients out of the food they're eating. It's really a big deal. The fourth scenario is, is a client what we call a carb burner? Now humans, we're all humans, we should be able to function on processing glucose for fuel or fat for fuel. We should be able to do both. But a lot of people will kind of get stuck on one side and they'll process glucose very efficiently, but they may not be able to process fats very well at all. And some people will be the other way. So if someone is stuck where they're really processing glucose, but they're not processing fat for fuel very well, once they stop bringing in that glucose fuel, they're gonna run out and it's gonna stress the body out. So we can have clients run these simple self tests to get an idea of how their body is functioning and are they leaning too far on this carb burner side. So the book that I told you how to get for free will walk you through figuring out with these clients, but we see these clients and a lot of them will be dealing with hypoglycemic type issues because they're burning through these carbohydrates too efficiently, too aggressively. Their body kind of wipes out all the blood sugar really quick and they get these crashes. These folks need that sugar to function um, or they need to correct the hypoglycemic issues so that their blood sugar can stay on a more even keel. So the book below will kind of help you walk through that or you can check out our video on understanding hypoglycemia and that'll give you some more insights into that issue. But you want to correct this problem before a client starts using intermittent fasting or they're really going to be stressing their body out. The final problem is what we call a catabolic imbalance. And it was Dr. Emanuel Rivisi who helped us understand that the body has a natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. During the day, our body should be in a more catabolic state where it's really good at creating energy and it's really good at breaking down tissues so that tissue can be rebuilt and the body can be renewed. And then at night, the body should move into an anabolic state where the body is very good at resting and repairing and rebuilding things. So you can see that there's benefits to both of these states. The problem is that some people will get stuck in one state most of the time or almost all of the time and they're not moving back and forth the way that the body should. So if someone is stuck in this catabolic state all the time, then they're really stuck in this breakdown mode. They're not going into the rebuilding and repairing and renewing the body phase. They're just kind of falling apart. So one of the biggest benefits to intermittent fasting is that while we're not eating, the body will basically break itself down. This autophagy is something that can be very beneficial to help the body renew and rebuild and extend the life of the body. We want to extend the life of this body that we're living in. But if someone's in this breakdown state all the time, then intermittent fasting is just throwing gas on the fire. You're going to make this client just totally fall apart because they're already constantly in this breakdown mode and you're going to magnify that with the fasting. So that book that I talked about will also help you understand how to figure out if a client is leaning too far on that catabolic side and if they are, steps they can take to improve that. But all of these issues, you can see they're going to make intermittent fasting a problem. And we know that we see clients all the time that they are come to us and they're doing intermittent fasting and they're not getting all the benefits. They're having all the problems. They don't understand. Their neighbor lost 47 pounds in a week and a half. How come they're not having any success? Well, these issues can create a lot of problems and we need to make sure we're looking at each client's unique bio-individuality and seeing is this process beneficial for them or do we need to help them correct these problems before they can see the real results. So if a client is having any digestive symptoms, jump over right now and watch our video on helping clients understand digestive troubles so you can get more insights on how to correct those issues. I can't wait to hear about your results.